All right, so today I'm going to bring you something a little bit different. Now, uh, mods for Kerbal are pretty easy to make, but there's one, well, there's two uh, places that people stagger. Uh, one of them is on integrating code into Kerbal, and I'm not going to go over that, not today at least. The other one is in creating parts using the MU format. Uh, I was using the .dae format, which just exports from Blender directly, but I decided to move over to using the .mu format because it allows me to put in transitions and... Uh, and uh, elements that I wouldn't be able to do using the DAE format. So here I've got a very simple Blender file with two meshes in it, uh, the Megalite panel and the Megalite frame. And they're just very simple meshes. Uh, and they've got a UV mapping so that I can put a texture on them. And I'm not going to go over how to do that, but those are super simple, so you can probably figure it out for yourself. And I've put them here in a project, a Unity project. So this Unity project has other stuff in it as well. But basically, when you download part tools, it comes with a Unity package, and a Unity package can be dragged into any Unity project. So just start a new project and drag the package in. Now, part tools is clunky and um, always uh, a little bit a little bit hard to understand. Uh, for example, my my part tools opened up a part tools window that wouldn't go away and couldn't be moved, and I had to finally close it with Alt F4 because I couldn't figure out any way to get it to go away, and it was not doing anything. It was empty. So there are some bugs, but it does what its job, its job is to export stuff into the .mu format, and it does that just fine. So let's go ahead and export that light. We're going to create a big light. We're going to need a new object. We're going to go ahead and make it into a capsule, just because that's kind of close to the uh, shape that we're going to go for, and I don't plan to use a mesh collider. I plan to use a capsule collider. You can use a mesh collider. It works fine. Um, but that's I want this to not have a very high... Um, uh, there's no reason. There's no reason to have a mesh collider for this object. All right. So I've got this capsule, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go find that Blender file. Here it is in uh, Megalite. I'm going to put the frame in. Bonk. And you can see that the frame is now there. Uh, one of the things you might notice, if you have been using the .dae file, um, the Y Z coordinates are flipped. So uh, you'll have to get used to that. But in this case. Uh, this is what our panel looks like, our frame looks like without the front panel on it. Now, if I were to rotate this, uh, it would be fine because the rotation for the parent object doesn't matter. This parent object will always be at zero, zero, zero with no rotation. But all of the children will have the rotation preserved. So, for example, if we add another game object, um, let's just add an empty one and drop it onto our capsule, which we're going to name uh, Megalite. And here is our capsule, which we're going to name Window. And let's go ahead and put a panel on there. There you go. Uh, so this panel that I've created, you can see how it's not at all rotated correctly. If we were to export this object now, this panel would be awkwardly placed like that. So we've got to actually square it out. There you go. So now we've got the two pieces that we want, the two meshes that we want. And what we need to do is, uh, is put some materials on them. Now I've gone ahead and built two materials ahead of time, Megalite Frame and Megalite Window. They actually have the same texture attached to them, uh, but one of them is transparent, translucent, and the other one is not. Uh, if, you, um, if you've noticed, these are actually KSP slash diffuse and not the default diffuse. This is what you get when you import part tools, and it comes with a bunch of special shaders, which you can either drag on or you can select from the drop-down list. See? So you need to select KSP shaders, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, in order to get the KSP performance you'd like. And some of them are really nice, like you've got bumped map shaders and so on and so forth. I'm not using any of them for this particular example, though. So let's drag the frame here and the window here, and there we go. We now have a megalite that's got a frame and a window. Uh, but it doesn't have a light, so let's go ahead and add a light. you got a lot of options as to what kind of light you want to add. I'm going to go ahead and add a spotlight. Now, unfortunately for us, the... Um, I need to be inside the mega window there. Unfortunately for us, the, uh, uh, the uh, KSP does not run in deferred rendering, so we can't get shadows out of this kind of light. Um, and that's, that's unfortunate, but it's the reason why none of the shadows you find in None of the lights you find in Kerbal have shadows except for the sun. Um, and there might be performance reasons for that, but I tend to think it's just because they didn't realize they could do that, and now it's too big of a change for them to, ju to just make. Well, either way, 
we're going to set this to be a wide angle spot, like so. And you can see that it's not illuminating anything. So we're going to pull it forward a little bit here. It's not illuminating it. Well, it will uh, eventually. So the range is currently 10. We're going to up that to 100. I don't know whether that actually matters or not. I think maybe Kerbal actually uh, forces it down to some specific reasonable level. Um, if we click on this, we can see that we have a collider that's not in the right spot. So let's go ahead and fix the collider, which we do by moving it up and then shrinking it down. There you go. And you don't have to be exact with the collider if you're not going to be able to mount things on it. This light, you'll not be, you won't be able to put anything else on the surface of this light, so it's okay if the collider is a little bit, a uh, little bit off, and that that should be fine. So we've got a spotlight, a window, and let's go ahead and make the spotlight have a specific color, like blue. There we go. Got a spotlight and a window, and it's got some transparent and some non-transparent, and all of that looks great. So now what we have to do is turn that into an object for KSP. Down here in Part Tools, it comes with three directories. The only one you actually need to worry about is lib, and these are the libraries that come with Part Tools. You want this Part Tools library, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. And the one we're working with right now is the Part Tools object. So drag that onto your base object. And there you go. You can see we've now got Part Tools script. So you can see that it lists both of our windows, the Alpha Transparent and Diffuse. So let's go ahead and compile those, except we just compiled them to who knows where because we didn't set a file URL. So let's go ahead and set that. I am using the Kerbal Space Program game data. I'm using my own uh, folder called Concave Construction 2 Parts. And here's the Megalite directory. It's empty right now. That's fine. Now, here's a confusing thing. Even though I set it, this file URL won't appear until I click somewhere else. A minor bug. Let's go ahead and name the URL, uh, name the model Megalite. There you go. Now, when we compile the materials, that'll work. And then we can write, and that'll work. OK? So when we pop on over to Megalite, uh, is this it? No, nope, that's not it. That's the Minecraft. Uh, nope, that's not it either. That's this project. There we are. <clears throat> so if we... Uh, hold on. None of these are the right directory. Uh, hold on, I'll go find it. Let me pause. All right, this is better. So we go into the Kerbal Space Program game data directory and into my specific parts. Here we go. Megalite. And you can see that we now have a megalite.mu and a window.tga. And that's really what we're looking for. That's all we need. So let's back out and grab the thing we're going to be doing. We want a light. So let's go into squad and grab a light. Parts. Utility. Spotlight 2. Just copy that. Go back into the directory we want. Paste it. And then open it into your browser of choice. I'm using Site, um, which is good. S C I T E. Uh, it's a good multi language editor, a lightweight editor. So we have to change a lot of these uh, so that they don't overlap. So we're going to call this Megalite. And obviously, it's not written by Nova, it's written by me. We'll just call me ACP for now. Um, and it's not named model.mu, it's named megalite.mu. And uh, we don't want to call it the Illuminator, we want to call it the Megalite. And it's not by them, and it's a big light. Uh, so we have this node attach, and uh, this is a system where you specify the location and then the forward nature. Now if you've been using .daes, uh, the up rather, uh, if, if you've been using .daes, this has probably bit you a couple of times. Uh, for, uh, for us, however, it's quite straightforward because y and z are correct. So this would be 0, 0 0.5, and uh, 0. There we go. And then the up would be 0, 0, 1. And then this would be our primary uh, connector. So we've got some attach rules here, where we're allowed to surface attach it, but not allowed to stack it. We want to change that so it's the other way around. That means that we're only able to affix it to a position where there is a connection node. We're not able to just stick it on the surface of anything. And that's a good restriction to have if you've got a giant light. And we're going to actually up the mass as well. So down here you can see this is the light control uh, module. Now we don't actually have any light animation. We didn't make any. So we're going to comment out all of this. We're going to radically increase the resources required. And we're also going to rename this spotlight to what it actually is called. What did we name it? 
we named it Spotlight with a capital S. There we go. So we save that and then we load up our Kerbal. I have a lot of mods. So this is going to take a bit. Let me pause. Alright, so that took a little bit of time, but uh, that's to be expected when you've got as many mods as I do. So let's go ahead and put a probodyne here, and then we'll add in a battery, because we're going to be using up a lot of juice. And then let's go and find our light. It should be right here in the utilities section, and oh, there it is. Mega light. It looks like our... Um, Oh, you know what I did wrong? Duh. So this is something you're going to find happens a lot. You you screw up something stupid and... Uh, is that the right... Yeah, that is... This is the right one here. Uh, you, f you screw up uh, doing something silly. And th in this case, the node attach didn't work. And that's because it's called node attach. And it shouldn't be called that. Hold on a moment. Yeah, node attach is where it attaches when you are doing a surface attach. And we're not doing that. We're actually going to be using a node stack. Uh, so, I stole this from another file. There we go. Now let's boot up Kerbal again and see whether that's right. Alright, shall we give that another shot? Again, let's give ourselves a core and a battery. Too many mods. Where's the batteries? There they are. And now let's go ahead and take a look at our Ah, there we are. That's what we want to see. So I accidentally put it in the middle of the light, but that's that's okay. We don't really care that much. Um, that's fine. Let's go ahead and rotate the probodyne, actually, so that... Uh, yeah, that, that, that's what we want. So that we can actually get the light shining on the ground rather than into space. There we go. So now let's go ahead and launch that. It's going to fall, I imagine, it's going to fall towards the light. But since it's in the middle, maybe not. Anyhow, the node attachment was a poorly placed one, but that's fine. I think I needed to do it Z rather than, well, whatever. So here's our light. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And now you can see that the light works fine. Now, in terms of the light uh, being visible here, that's what the rest of those arguments that we come at the doubter for um, we could have probably created a light that would have lit up the interior, but we didn't. Uh, so that's how it is, but it works fine. It works just like any other light. And if we wanted to see how far it goes, it goes pretty far. I don't think it goes out to 100, but it goes out pretty far. So that's how you can build a, uh, a quick little .mu object for your game. Uh, and the .mu file format is hugely advantageous because it saves all of the children tra transforms, whereas a .die does not. So if you wanted to do something like an engine, um, you wouldn't be able to use .die very easily. But .mu is quite fine, works quite easily, unless you add all sorts of much, much better materials and secondary objects. So I hope this was useful to any of you Kerbal fans out there. And uh, that's it.